Welcome to West Kentucky Community and Technical College's Cooking at the College. I'm your host, Chef Brett McCarthy, and I want to cook with you. Welcome to Cooking at the College. I'm your host, Chef Brett McCarthy, and we're going to be doing some appetizers today. Uh, I have a mussels marinara, and I also have an artichoke and shrimp dip. Usually, we don't add shrimp to it, but I kind of added that dimension to this particular dish. And this is really easy to put together. It almost takes no time whatsoever. But the first thing that I'm going to start out with is I'm going to start out with half a pepper. I'm just going to take out the seeds here. And I'm going to take out that little pith, just like that. All right. Just like that. Okay. You can do it from the inside or the outside. I like to do it on the inside. It's easier to cut through. I'm just going to cut it up. And it's really, the recipe calls for half a cup, which is about half of a, a pepper. But really, it's for decoration, so it's really not a critical element in this, in this dish. So if you go a little bit more, a little bit less, it's not going to make a whole heck of a difference. Okay, we're just going to do that just like that. And that's just like that, easy as pie. I'm going to just chop it up just a little bit more. And I suppose you could do some roasted pepper, which would be nice, or you could do a little pimento. Uh, so you could do a couple nice things with that. And uh, whatever you do, probably not use uh, canned red peppers there, unless you're using roasted peppers, that is. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get this, uh, we've got a cup of mayonnaise here. I'm going to put that right in there. Okay, now normally this would be made with a cheese sauce, but instead of making a milk-based cheese sauce, we're using uh, mayonnaise as our base. We're going to add a cup of Parmesan cheese. Just going to mix that right in there. Okay. And then it's just adding the other things uh, very easily. We're going to put in, this is approximately 14 ounces of chopped uh, artichoke hearts. That's all that is. So that's about one can's worth drained and chopped. We also have one box of frozen, frozen, frozen spinach. That's, that's the French way to say it, frozen. Not really. And so we just drain that out and uh, in fact, I'm going to just chop that up just a little bit nicer, or more nicely. Okay. And I suppose you could use other kinds of greens as long as they were cooked. You know, you could use, you could even do some blanched broccoli or something like that. So there's a lot of flexibility, is what I'm saying with this, with this dish. And I'm just going to push this a little bit so that I can get that in there. Okay. And then we're going to add our artichoke hearts, chopped artichoke hearts, and mix that in. And this is just a, I mean, this is so delicious, it's unbelievable how nice this is. And it's so much easier than making a white sauce, it's what is traditional. Okay. And I like the idea of adding the shrimp to it. Okay, so you got that nice little color because it's kind of bland, just green and white. So you get the little color. Of course, it's very pretty for as a uh, something for uh, Christmas. Got this in high def, so it's really nice. All right, then we're going to add a little bit of shrimp. <laughs> yeah, high def. There we go. I'm going to take off this excess. Well, this is just uh, salad shrimp. It's already been deveined. Uh, Devein, oh, the devein has been taken out. I'm wondering the little hands that have to do these little deveining anyways. I won't even go there, but uh, we got the uh, tails taken off and they've been pre-cooked and flash frozen, so we've just thawed them out, so they're already ready to go. If they're not cooked, you'll have to 
You'll have to cook them and, and then chill them. And this is just very pretty. Okay, this is ready to go. I'm just going to stir this in. All right. Okay, so now, I'm going to set this aside for just a moment. And I'm just going to take a little bit of release spray, and I'm going to spray in approximately a 9 by 13 casserole dish. I like a larger one because we're going to spread it with cheese and everything, and it's nice for people to dip into. Of course, if you have your, a nice um, casserole, like a ceramic casserole dish, that's always pretty because then it can just be put right onto the table, the serving table, and uh, you, you know it's, it's nice to go. It's ready to go. All right, so we're going to put that right in here like that. Like I said, I've modified this recipe. This was a recipe that uh, I got off the, the web, but I've made it, made it my own. Made it my own, so I've made quite a, quite a few changes to it. We're going to add a cup of Monterey Jack cheese. Gonna sprinkle that over there. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to just seal it up right like this. And that'll go in a 350 degree oven for approximately uh, 20 minutes. Now we're going to serve this with a non bread, which is like a pita bread, for Indi but it's made in India. And uh, the next time we see each other, in a few moments, you're going to see how that's uh, made. And I'll see you back in just a moment. Welcome back to Cooking at the College. I'm your host, Chef Brett McCarthy. And what I have in my hand is a product called Non Bread. And what Non Bread is, it's a pita bread from India. And how they make it is they take uh, some dough and they have basically what amounts to a clay pot. And that's the best way I can describe it. But it's a clay oven that is right side up instead of this way. And uh, they slap that dough against the pot and it flattens out and then it cooks on the sides of this this oven that sits on coals I, I'm presuming I haven't been to India so I don't know exactly how it looks but uh, it warms up gets really hot just like an adobe type of oven that you would see uh, maybe in Central America and uh, what you end up with is something like this and uh, this is or exactly like this and this is uh, non bread and now you can order it uh, it's been around for centuries I'm sure uh, but now it's just become the in thing uh, so people are ordering it more and more. What I have is I have just a little bit of butter heated up and I just put this right like that. And what I'm doing is I'm just browning it up in nice and warm and what will happen is it's going to puff up a little bit just like pita bread. Now if you can't find non bread you can get some nice pita bread or some flat bread. They actually have a Greek pita flat bread that's a little bit spongier, more kind of like this. It's a softer type of bread. Uh, it's good for gyros. Some people say gyros. Uh, very nice for doing those kinds of sandwiches. Uh, so this is a really nice uh, uh, product. I like it a lot. And you can use this to fold. You know, you can make it as like almost like a soft taco or something like that. So you can put different things in it. Chunks of meat, uh, a barbecue, whatever you'd want to put in this. So this is really nice just to kind of fold over. Uh, it's like a soft tortilla, really it is, but it's not quite as thin. Uh, it's much more spongy, and you can see that it's starting to puff up here. It doesn't really have that pocket that uh, regular pita bread would have. Um, so we're going to warm that up a little bit. You can see it's browning just nicely there. All right. And it doesn't take all that long. And we're just going to cook it till it's brown. It's still going to be nice and soft. It's just going to be a little bit crispy uh, when we cook it. Uh, it's not going to be like, uh, like tortilla chips or something like that. Although you could certainly use tortilla chips or crackers or whatever with this artichoke dip. But this, I thought, would just be a little bit nicer, a little bit more fancier, something to talk about. OK, so that's ready to go. And that's, that's all there is to it, OK? So we'll, I'll meet you back over on the other side of the table 
And uh, we're going to start our second appetizer, which is mussels marinara. And see you back in a moment. Welcome back to Cooking at the College. I'm your host, Chef Brent McCarthy. And we're going to do mussels marinara. This is an old favorite of mine. And I've been doing it for quite a long time. Some very simple ingredients involved in this. Uh, we have approximately two tablespoons of uh, chopped white onion. We also have uh, just, well, this is a little bit more than we need, but a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, excuse me. And we also have a little bit of butter, about a tablespoon of that. Also got a couple cloves of garlic, and you can always add more garlic if that's uh, for you. We're going to do, going to need about a table, couple tablespoons of, of chopped parsley, a little bit of oregano, um, a little bit of red pepper flakes. We're going to add about a half a teaspoon of that. And I like the red pepper flakes over other types of hot item, hot things that you can add heat to it because it just works really well. And we have about a 10 ounces of chopped uh, tomatoes, and you can use canned tomatoes if you have fresh tomatoes from the garden works a lot better, but we don't have that right at this point in time. Um, so we're going to start out with uh, chopping up the, the garlic. Now, there's some easy ways to do garlic. If you don't have a garlic press, you can take the, the side of your knife and just go like that. And what happens is that it'll just peel right off, just like that. So that's real easy to do. Okay, we'll put that aside and we'll just give it another hit, just like that. Comes right off. Well, pretty well off, okay. And then we're just going to chop that up just like this. And you can, you can coarsely chop it. You don't have to get it really, really fine. Oh, I got a little bit of the skin there. Skin adds a little bit of fiber there. I'm going to show you the mussels in just a minute. Really nice. Okay. So I'm just going to put this. We'll scoot this a little bit just like that so I can put that right into my cup. Okay. Clean off the old hands there. Then I'm going to take a little bit of this oregano and just chop that up. Nicey nice. I'm going to take a little bit of the parsley. Okay. Some of this parsley will add to the dish and some of it we'll use as garnish. I'm using the heel of the knife to go through it very easily. I want this pretty fine, so I'm going to get this nice and fine. Beep! That's our little dishwasher. When it's done, it makes a nice little beep sound. You probably didn't hear it, but I did. All right. Okay, so we're going to go over to uh, the stove, and just a little note uh, before we uh, go to the little thing that goes in between each scene. Uh, I don't know what that's called. Uh, we got white wine. Now, if you're not into white wine, uh, you, can, uh, you can use some clam juice or some seafood stock or something like that, so you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, it's going to take about a half a cup of white wine. Of course, all the alcohol, most of the alcohol will burn off. Uh, but not entirely. So if you don't like to use wine in your cooking, uh, then you can certainly use uh, some clam juice instead. Uh, this is a nice, uh, very nice dish, and we wouldn't want you not to make it just because it has some wine in it. Okay, so we'll see you back in just a moment. Welcome back to Cooking at the College. I'm your host, Chef Brett McCarthy. And uh, what we have here, I have everything set up here, and I want to show you these mussels. And I'm just going to turn this heat down too much so it doesn't get too hot there. 
Uh, these are actually uh, mollus mussels, which fall under the mollus, and this is a bivalve mollusk. Uh, has to be cooked, they have to be cooked fresh. In other words, they have to be alive. Now, they have a new type of mussel out these days that has been flash cooked and uh, frozen, flash frozen. So it's flash cooked and then flash frozen. And that's why you see that these are open. But normally, normally, so when they thaw out, they might open up a little bit because they're already pre cooked. All right, they're not cooked so much that when you cook them, they'll get, you know, uh, really tough. But in this case, uh, these are ready to go and uh, they don't require that much. You basically just have to heat them through. And, uh, but if this was a fresh mussel and you wanted to see if it was still alive, all you'd have to do is squeeze it, and then if it stayed closed, it'd be fine. If it didn't stay closed, uh, or if it didn't open up after you cooked it, those are bad mussels and you wouldn't want to do that. That goes for clams or, or oysters or anything else that would be a bivalve mollusk. So those have to be either cooked and flash frozen, or they have to be uh, pre-cooked and then they, they can be shucked and canned and those are pre-cooked uh, but they have to be eaten uh, from a live state or and or cooked after they are um, some in some way processed okay so that's a little little thing on the types of mussels we're going to use also fresh mussels have a thing called a beard and this these have already been cleaned of their beard these are uh, farm raised and they have a little beard and what that beard does is it holds on to the little netting or whatever they're maybe to the rock or the coral or everything like that and, uh, and, uh, and that's exactly what it does and there's no beard on these. These have been pretty much cleaned and everything like that but way back when, when I used to have to clean the mussels, I had to take off the beard. So that's another nice thing about buying these types of mussels, ready to go. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit of butter and you might say, oh, I don't like mussels but if you've never tried them, then you can't say that. And I told uh, my students who made this the other day, they were like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to like this. And uh, a lot of them liked it a lot. They, were, they ate the whole thing. So, you know, it's not, you know, sometimes perception. is not really what the truth is. I got a little bit of olive oil and the butter here. All right, and we're going to heat this up nice. All right, we're going to add our onions, not too much onions. All right, you could use shallots if you wanted to. All right, we're going to add our garlic, our nice chopped garlic. Like I said, if you like a lot of garlic, you could add more. Okay, we'll add our tomatoes. I'm going to keep those tomatoes right in the center just to let that garlic cook out a little bit. All right. And we are going to add a little bit of our oregano. All right. And our chopped pepper flakes right there. All right. About a teaspoon of our parsley. All right. And then we're going to just add. We can use that, that excess stock right in there. You can see they've got a little stock. You can pour that right in there. That'll make it taste good. Sometimes the mussels will fall out. All right. And I need some white wine. And that'll be really nice. Okay. So we need to cover this so that it heats through. Remember, these are still a little bit frozen. And so we're going to get these nice and hot. I'm going to turn down the heat just a little bit. I don't want to overcook them. And they stay really tender. Now, while that is going, I'm going to let that cook out, oh, I don't know, four or five minutes, not even. Okay. I have some fettuccine. Now, normally, I would use linguine uh, for this dish, or I'd use, I might not even use anything. I might just serve it with some nice bread. If you have some nice crusty bread, it's really nice because it makes a wonderful sauce and you can take the bread after you've eaten the mussels and sop up the sauce. The sauce is that good. So you can use some nice crusty bread. Uh, linguine is, is better for this or angel hair. The, the rule of thumb is that um, 
the thinner the pasta, the thinner the sauce. The thicker the pasta, the thicker the sauce. So that's why when you see ziti and rigatoni with a thick meat sauce or fettuccine with a cream sauce. And with angel hair, you see like the light butter sauces and things like that. So that's why. But this is what I had in the freezer, so that's what we're going to use it. This is what they call a fresh frozen pasta. Normally you can get your fresh pasta in the grocer's refrigerator, maybe by the cheese area. Okay, That's going to take about, oh, well, about the same amount of time as it takes for the, the mussels to get done. Okay, so we're going to stir that around. I did salt the water. You notice I put a nice little basket in there so that I can just lift that up just like that. And I might toss that with a little bit of olive oil just to keep it from sticking, probably will. You can certainly do that, or some butter. All right. And we'll just check on this real quick so you can see how this is looking. Isn't that beautiful? That's going to make such a nice sauce. All right, so we're going to bring that heat up just a little bit, okay? And when, we'll, when we uh, see you back here, uh, again, we're going to actually plate everything up, and you can see how these two appetizers come, to, come together. So we'll see you in just a minute. Welcome back to Cooking at the College. I'm your host, Chef Brett McCarthy. We're going to uh, unveil our dishes. And first is the artichoke dip. All right, so this is really, really nice. You can see how nice that looks. You can just scoop that out. All right. That's nice and get this bowl out of the way. Get the other one here. Woo! That looks really pretty. Okay. I'm gonna take that non bread. I'm just gonna cut it into triangles. Okay. We can just stick it down in here, and that's ready to go, just like that. And that's just beautiful. And that looks, I mean, I, you could get something more gorgeous than that. Maybe we could put a little bit of parsley on there. And that's just done, just like that. That's just beautiful. All right. So the next thing that we want to do, get some of the parsley out of this. Okay. if I'm adding more parsley or taking away. Okay, so now we're going to take that, that pasta. Okay. I'm just going to shake it a little bit. All right, okay. And I'm going to add just a little bit of olive oil. That's just to complement the olive oil that I used in the sauce. Okay, I've already salted my water, so I don't have to worry about salting the pasta. Okay. I'm just going to mound that just nicely right like that. Okay, just like that. I'm going to come over and get our mussels here. Just like that. It's good to kind of just put them around the edge there. You got to work quickly because they're going to cool off relatively quickly. So it's one of those things. It doesn't, uh, and of course you can just put this in a big bowl too. A big glass bowl is nice. They're pretty just like that. Uh, I won't do all of them there. Well, actually, I will do all of them. Okay. I have a 
few more than I really need, but that's all right, because I want to get to that nice sauce. Okay. And we'll just, well, and we'll just pour. Just like that. And that's just delicious, just like that. And we'll just clean these up, clean this up. All right. Take a little bit of parsley, just like that. All right. And when we get back, we're going to just taste this, and it'll be perfect. That's beautiful, just like that. So we'll see you back in just a moment. Welcome back to Cooking at the College. I'm your host, Chef Brent McCarthy. And what we have is we have our mussels marinara, uh, which is just tomatoes and garlic and onions. And it's just really nice, nice spicy little tomato sauce. And you can serve that over pasta. You can even have some nice bread with it for dipping. We also have our artichoke and shrimp dip uh, with some naan bread around it. Very, very nice. And I just wanted to talk for just a few moments about um, our program program is approximately a two-year program. Um, it uh, depends on what uh, facet you go into or what uh, degree track you go into. It depends on how long it takes. Uh, we have a food and beverage management option and we have a chef option and we also have a, a catering and personal chef option. So there's, there's three uh, different options on the associate levels. We also have uh, different options for the diploma as well as the certificate level. Our Shortest certificate is one semester long, all the way up to uh, just over two years long to uh, finish the whole associate's degree. I mention that is because we are going into enrollment, and uh, if you have some uh, people who are interested in coming to uh, culinary arts school, uh, they can come to this program, and we'd be more than happy to have them. So uh, we do fill up very quickly, and usually by the end of May or first part of June, we're already filled up. So I just wanted to pass that along that. Enrollment is, is uh, open uh, for uh, all students, and so any program that they would like to uh, take, uh, they most certainly can. Um, I'm going to invite um, Tammy over here and have her try. And Tammy, we don't eat the shells. Okay. We just eat the inside parts, okay? okay? Uh, shells might offer a little bit of more fiber, but we don't <laughs> eat that. Okay, so you're going to try that and just eat that. And just dip it in a little bit of the sauce, maybe take some of the pasta there. I don't know if you'll be able to get the pasta too. It's not a very easy. Uh, it's very hot. It's very hot. Very nice. And you know what? I forgot to do this, but this is kind of fun. You can just add some pretty. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? It's good. It's good. See? You can I add didn't some think nicer. I like it. I thought it was the one that didn't like it, but it is see? good. See? It is good. It's very nice. And see, this is what I'm telling you. A lot of people look at it and they think they're not going to like the mussels, and they're very tasty, mm -hmm. very tasty. Let's take a little bit of this artichoke dip, and this I know you'll like. Okay. You try that. Very, very hot. Mm -hmm. mm, that's very good. That's very good. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? So we have our mussels marinara. Like I said, I put a little bit of shredded Parmesan cheese on there. That may just made it just that much more pretty. And then we have our artichoke and shrimp dip. Thank you, Tammy. And we also have our naan bread. And uh, I want to cook with you. 